Hello, and thank you for joining the Conservative Book Club's new weekly podcast. We're on iTunes and Stitcher, and you can easily download our podcast at conservativebookclub.com backslash podcast. I'm your host, Chris Malagisi, Editor-in-Chief of the Conservative Book Club, and we are very honored to have a very special guest with us today, the legendary Dr. Thomas Sowell. Dr. Sowell is the author of the new book, Discrimination and Disparities, published by our friends over at Basic Books. I'm sure he needs no introduction, but Dr. Sowell is one of my personal heroes and is the author of the groundbreaking book, Basic Economics, which was a game changer for me when I was growing up and first read it. He's an American economist, social theorist, and political philosopher, a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution at Stanford University, and is the author of over 30 books and the recipient of the National Humanities Medal presented by the President of the United States in 2003. His new book, Discrimination and Disparities, is an empirical examination of how economic and other disparities disparities arise. Dr. Soule challenges the idea that different economic outcomes can be explained by any one factor, be it discrimination, exploitation, or genetics. It's readable enough for anyone with no prior knowledge of economics, but does challenge traditional beliefs across the ideological spectrum. And the book's already getting huge reviews and praise, especially from Gerald O'Driscoll over at the Cato Institute, who says in this provocative book, Dr. Thomas Soule turns the table on those who automatically link disparate outcomes to discrimination. He begins by focusing instead on the myriad of factors that need to come together for success. Before we can explain why people fall behind in life, we must first understand what life demands for success. This book is a wonderful introduction to the thought of one of our most important social thinkers. Dr. Sol, it is a true honor and privilege to have you with us today at the Conservative Book Club and help us launch our brand new Conservative Book Club podcast. Well, thank you. Thank you. Good to be with you. Well, congratulations on your new book, Discrimination and Disparities. Uh, Dr. Soule, tell us about your new book and why you decided to write it. Well, I guess one of the things that, that, that troubles me greatly uh, is that people seem to think that in the absence of uh, various sins, uh, different groups would have sim- the same or similar outcomes or at least random outcomes. Whereas uh, the, the deck is completely stacked against any such uh, outcome, uh, not, not necessarily in the sense that any given individual or group has stacked the deck, but the circumstances stack the deck. Uh, you know, p- people who, uh, who live along the coast, and I, anywhere in the world, uh, tend to be more advanced than people who live miles inland, and certainly more advanced than people who live up in uh, isolated mountain communities. I mean, the circumstances of life are just radically different and have been different for thousands of years of recorded history. Why would you think that all these various factors that are needed to create a given outcome would be equally available to everybody? They're not. Hmm. Well, in your book in particular, you challenge the status quo and make certain claims that discrimination may not be exactly correlated with economic disparity. Uh, Can you please explain that in more detail? Because I think that's something very prescient as you can't watch the news uh, and any time you hear about tax cuts and economic disparity, you always, it crops up from time to time the idea that the correlation between um, discrimination and economic disparity. Can Can you explain more of that? Well, if you look look at it empirically, you you see the, the, the how how unjustified un, un, uh, that conclusion is. For example, in Malaysia, the Chinese have for oh for generations, in fact centuries, had a higher average incomes than the Malays. Now, the Chinese do not have any privilege the Malays do not have. In point of fact, the Malays have privilege that the Chinese don't have. I mean, they, they Malays will be pre, have preferential treatment both in uh, the universities and government employment and in private employment, uh, and yet, not despite all that, the Chinese do better. And so, you cannot explain this by uh, uh, discrimination. Uh, otherwise, it would be the Chinese who would have a lower income. So when you hear arguments on television, especially or in the news about economic outcomes being determined based on purely just discrimination of you know any kind of a minority uh, minority group um, that's out there how, how would you respond to those that say that people people might legitimately or um, be disadvantaged in life because they uh, are of a minority or um, had it hard when they were growing up and did not come from um, you know the, the coastal parts of the US if, if you will 
Well, uh, it, it is certainly true that all of us, you know, we're born into circumstances. We had no voice in creating the family that we were born into, the culture around us, the stage of the country at the time. All of those things are totally beyond our control. And so there is an element in there that is not controlled by the individual. But that's not the same as saying that whenever someone's uh, doing better, that person is doing better because uh, of that. Uh, one of the phrases that drives me crazy is that, you know, the, 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 the system is rigged. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, and people can say this, and, and there's not even a, a question of saying, what is your evidence for that? Now, just in one of the recent years, uh, it turns out that people who were in the uh, top uh, 400 richest people in the world uh, lost a net uh, had, a, had a net loss of $73 billion. Now, if you're going to rig the system, surely you can do it better than that. <laughs> surely. Yeah. But, but the, the big problem is that you say these kinds of things, and in many circles, that passes muster. That's, that's, to, that's part of their vision of the world. And they don't bother to check what are the facts. Well, Doctor, so you've written numerous, dozens of books at this point in your life, and one of the things we always love to ask the authors that come um, come on our podcast and in our author interview series is, what are the books that you read or inspired you? Oh, heavens, yes, there are so <laughs> many of them that it would be hard, be hard to say. But I guess books, books on history, especially, and on on and on geography. I mean, when you when hmm. you study the geography of the world, you realize that some, some people never had a ghost of a chance. And I'm thinking primarily of mountain people around mm-hmm. the world. Now, that about 10 12% of the people in the world, the population, uh, uh, live, live up in mountains. And that may seem like not many, but that's more than twice the number of people in the United States. Hmm. Uh, 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 and about 10 times what there are in Italy. Now, if you look at the accomplishments of people in those circumstances, you don't, uh, you don't find a Galileo. A Michelangelo, you know, uh, a, a, a Da Vinci, a Fermi, mm-hmm. and so forth, such as you would find in Italy, which has one tenth the population. Now, that's not a put down of people in the mountains. It's it's a recognition that for a number of reasons, the the mountains are a terrible place to be, and poverty and backwardness has been common, or in, in places like that around the world, not universally, but certainly uh, to a very great extent. And I think that's an excellent point. And, you know, something throughout we heard throughout the 2016 presidential campaign was uh, about many people who lived in the Appalachian area in the United States that came out in, in droves to support President Trump. Um, I'd be curious to get your thoughts on um, the economically disadvantaged, especially in the Appalachian part of the country, and uh, they're supporting Donald Trump overwhelmingly. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, that, that is, that's not something I looked into in great detail. I know that a lot of these areas produce things like coal, uh, uh, which, uh, provi- which provided them with some uh, sustenance. Uh, mm-hmm. And that when the environmentalists go overboard, as they usually do, uh, they make it uh, uh, very hard for people like that to earn a living. Well, in in of course, the environmentalists would always make it harder for that. Um, Doctor, so what are your thoughts on Donald Trump and his administration so far? Mixed. Uh, I think that, well, one, I think it's better than the previous president, but that is not what I would call extravagant <laughs> praise. Okay. Uh, I, I also am troubled by the manner in which he does things, and uh, and, and in many things, Manner matters. There used to be an old song called that said, "It's not what you do; it's what it's the way that you do it." And he does it he, when, even when he does something that is absolutely necessary and, and whatnot. The way that he does it leaves it what, leaves himself wide open to, uh, to for his enemies to take pie shots at him. I, I saw just uh, recently a video of Donald Trump in his 30s, and it was it was an entirely different man. He was far more mature in his 30s than he is today. Uh, he he was way measured in the things he said. He was thoughtful. You know, he he took many things into account. He didn't resort to uh, just a lot of uh, shooting from the hip uh, rhetoric and so on. 
And I wonder now, how, how many men are more mature in their 30s than in their 70s? <laughs> and, and, if, and if we're going to draw an extrapolation over time, then the, the suggest that he's on a downward trajectory. I don't know that, obviously. But it tro- it's, it's troubling. If he has to take decisive action internationally and needs the, the support of other countries, he has done almost everything he could to, to ma- minimize his chance of getting that support. Well, are you, are you, were you in favor of the tax cut? Did you support that? And do oh, you absolutely. feel that will be helpful for the economy? I, I, no question about it. Uh, in fact, one of the terrible things about the left is they have managed to uh, uh, distort tax cuts. Uh, it's automatically assumed that if you cut the tax rate, that you've cut the tax revenue. And that is absolutely wrong. Uh, it, it, it may happen. It may not happen. There's no, there's no iron law that says tax revenues move in the same direction as, ta- as tax rates. And, in fact, I, under the Coolidge administration in the 20s, under the Kennedy administration in the 60s, under the Reagan administration in the 80s, and under the George W. Bush 43 uh, administration, tax rates went down, uh, tax revenues went up. And there's, there's nothing mysterious about it. Uh, when tax rates reach a certain point, people who have high income simply put their money into tax-exempt uh, securities, such as municipal bonds, for example, or they send their money overseas. And so uh, uh, going back to the original, the first one in Cooley's administration, they dropped the tax rate on the highest bracket from 73% down to 24%. The wow. revenue that they collected rose, and it rose especially from the the wealthy not only paid more abs- more absolutely in minute and income taxes under the 24 than they ever had under the 73 uh they 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 paid a higher percentage of all income taxes and yet that fact which is re- very easily verified with internal revenue st- uh, statistics uh just has passed over i saw an article by uh Professor Blinder of uh, Princeton just recently in the Wall Street Journal in which he says, uh, we can't afford a tax cut because the deficit is already too large. When Cooley's brought the the tax rate down from 73% to 24%, the revenue expanded so much that they were able to pay off one-fourth of the national debt. But it's just automatically assumed that the two two things must move together, and it's not even open to question. That's the terrible part. In other words, human beings have been making mistakes as long as they've been human beings. <laughs> but, it, but, it's, but, it, but it's when you refuse to check what you, what you believe against any facts, that's when the mistake becomes deadly. You know, Dr. Sol, you've written over 30 books. You've educated millions on free, in free market economics and have inspired countless numbers of people throughout your life, including myself. And, you know, I, I'm curious. I know that being the practitioner that you are of economics, um, and it's considered the dismal science, but at the same time, I'm curious, are you optimistic about America and her future? No. Why? <clears throat> One, uh, quite aside from the political things that are, that are truly awful, uh, and, the, and, the, and the degeneration that has occurred uh, after the ideas of the left became triumphant in the 60s. More than that, we're living in a nuclear age, and we're going to have to have policies made upon a very hard-headed look at the realities and, and of the limited choices we have. And I don't think that uh, this generation is capable of, of doing that, uh, we, we, there's too many much glib rhetoric out. Um, I think that if, if despite the apparently hopeful signs now that they may be able to re- rein in Kim, uh, the South, the North Korean uh, dictator, yes, Kim Jong Un, yeah. yeah, that uh, it, ultimately it may come down to our choices may be very limited. Maybe whether we're going to strike first or he's going to strike first. And you, can't, and you can't have Congress decide that, because just to introduce that subject in Congress is to, ra- is to raise the chance that he's going to strike first. You know, and uh, the, 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 a great Supreme Court justice once said, the Constitution is not a suicide pact. And so the only way I can see if, if things can't be worked out diplomatically, that we, have, that we have a good chance of survival, is to strike first. I don't know. I'm not in favor of striking first. I'm not in favor of striking at all. 
But the fact is, our, our, our choices in the real world tend to be far more narrow and far more unpleasant than the choices people make in their minds when they're envisioning uh, sort of a very different world from that the world that exists. Well, I hope people heed your message then and, and, and listen and read your book. And just one last question, Dr. Soul. Um, when, you, when you look back at your life, and again, another personal question, but I'm very interested. When you look back at your life, and what do you believe are some of your greatest accomplishments? Oh, heavens, I, I, I'd have to leave that to someone else. But, like, but doing the book did lead me to think back to my own life, and particularly when I, the, the research on birth order, you know, that the, that the firstborn has so many advantages. And, again, this is not something that somebody planned. It's the way uh-huh. things worked out. And uh, had my parents lived out a normal life, I would have been the sixth child in the family. Because they died young, I was adopted as an infant into a family where I was the only child in a family of four adults. A huge windfall gain uh, uh, for me and, of course, a great tragedy for my parents. Well, sir, your story is is inspirational to many. I know those that know your background in bio and uh, your academic and professional career successes. We greatly appreciate um, your work that you've done and very excited to let our members know about discrimination and disparities. And uh, we've been letting them know all the last two weeks. And, uh, you know, we wish you all the best of luck with your book, sir. And we look forward to your next one. And I hope you'll join us again when you write your next one. Thank you. And I look forward to it. All right. Well, CBC members, make sure to check out Discrimination and Disparities at conservativebookclub.com. If you like the podcast, let us know what you think. Leave a review and subscribe today and and go to conservativebookclub.com to learn more about Discrimination and Disparities and Dr. Soul. Thank you again, sir, very much for joining us today. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. 